Hello guys, welcome back to the channel again. So for today, let's look at something different apart from tackling vulnerable machines. So there is this war game that is called Over the Wire and it's quite an old school resource. So this is, I have actually done this before but it was like 5-6 years ago. So this will be something refreshing to do as a video to show how you can participate and play this over the wire war game because this requires no setup at all so you don't even need to configure a vulnerable machine or VMware player you can immediately SSH into the server and start tackling on the challenges so the 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 most basic one is the bandit so this is actually very helpful to improve your Linux skills so it's about how you can navigate the Linux file system and understand how Linux works so for today's video let's take a look at this so we can see that this is how you can start you SSH as the user bandit0 onto the server bandit.labs.overthewire.org at port 2220 there should be instructions on what you should do to complete the challenge so you can see that for the first level the password for the next level is stored in the file called dash located in the home directory so there are some helpful reading materials and basically it's about mastering Linux or improving your Linux um, skills so this is very helpful if you are a beginner and you want to better understand how to use a Linux based operating system because for example the Kali OS which is used for pen testing is based on Linux okay, so let's begin SSH bandit0 at bandit.labs.overthewire.org and the port 2220 so we can see that we oh sorry we need to enter the password so the password is bandit0 and we are into the server now so yep so we should be in the user's home directory so as we are authenticated as bandit0 we are in bandit0 directory so the first challenge can Okay, so this is actually not the, the level 1, this is level 0, so it's my mistake. So we should start from level 0 to 1. Yep. So the password for the next level is located, is stored in a file called readme. So this is like very very basic, right? you just need to know the command to read a file and you can get the password for the next level. So there are many ways you can read a file in Linux and using the cat command is one of them. You can do more as well you can do less as well so there are many ways you can read the file and you can even use like a file editor like nano for example you can read the file as well so now we have the password for the next level we can then proceed on to bandit1 so this is the password for the bandit1 user so let's just exit this ssh console and then we re-authenticate again as the bandit1 user because this will be the next level bandit1 and the password will be this content in the readme file so let's just paste it in and here we are we are now in the next challenge which, which is bandit1 so, so, yep, so this is the one that we were looking at earlier so the password now is stored in the file called dash so let's take a look so we can see that this is the file that they want us to read it's in the file called dash so this is a bit tricky because if you were to do, if you were to do something like cat dash I think that it is expecting some kind of input so what this means is that 
it is not interpreting this dash as a file name but it is interpreting it as an argument to this command so that's why it's not reading it so there are a few ways you can do this and the easiest way is to just append the path to the file so if you state the file path instead the full path then the cat command will be able to interpret it as a file name instead of an argument like for example this is the full path of our current directory so if we were to do something like this which is to state the full path we will be able to read the file because um, by supplying the full path the cat command is able to interpret this as a file name instead of an argument to the command so you can do something like this as well so dot slash means that you are defining the path to be the current directory and the file name so these are some ways i believe there are more ways you can read the dash file by just simply googling like google search for dash file name so there are there are helpful reading materials provided as well but this is one way that you can do it so let's just proceed on so this password will be for the next challenge which means that it will be for the bandit2 user so let's just re-authenticate again as the bandit2 user and this should be the password let's just paste it and we should be able to authenticate as bandit2 maybe I didn't copy it properly so let's just copy and paste again okay so now we are in the bandit2 directory which is the next challenge Yep, yep. so the password for the next level is stored in the file call spaces yeah i think we don't even need to read the instructions it should be quite straightforward the challenge will be basically in the user's directory so let's see what they want us to do now so okay so the password is in this file name and there are spaces in the file so because we are in a proper bash shell we can basically use the tap button on your keyboard and it will auto complete the file name for us so you can see that how it does this is to escape the space character by appending a backslash on it so this is how you can read the file i believe you can double quote it as well yep, yep. Yep, so you can use double quote as well and you don't have to escape the spaces in the file name anymore if you were to use the double code so what happens if there is a double code in the in the file name then you will have to use a backslash to escape it so this is how you can read a file name with spaces in the file name by escaping it with a backslash or just quoting it or double quoting it single quote works as well so it's the same thing Okay, pretty straightforward so let's just proceed on to the next challenge as the user bandit3 so this is the password for the next challenge which is the bandit3 user okay so let's just skip reading the instructions because it's quite straightforward everything is going to be in the user's directory so after we authenticate we can just list the files and yep it's pretty self-explanatory so in here so this is a directory you can see it from here D and the color is different so it's pretty obvious so let's go in here and there's a hidden file so so if you name your file with a dot at the front it will be hidden if you list the file with just the ls command so it's a habit of mine to list a directory with the dash al because this will list it out in a in a format like this and it's easier for me to see and it also will show the hidden items like for example i like to list it this way if you were to exclude the dash l then it will be like this instead of vertically displaying with all the details of the file ownership file size and everything like the date timestamp it's going to display out like this um, horizontal format without the details 
So it's a habit of mine to list the files in the directory with the dash al syntax. So this of course will show us the hidden files as well. So if we were to go in here and we were to list it out, we will be able to just cat the file. And we will be able to get the password um, for the next challenge in this dot hidden file. So let's just proceed on with that to bandit4. Okay, so it should be similar as well. There's an in here directory. Okay, so it's a bit tricky now. My guess is that the password is in one of these files. And there are 10 files. So one way we can do this is just manually read each and every individual file and we should be able to find one with the password because it's a bit tricky all of the file size is the same so we can't determine which one stands out from the file size alone and we can see that this is binary data so um, it's not like a text file so another command that is useful is the file command so this will show us what file type is what file type is the input like for example if we were to do this it's able to tell us that file 00 is a, a pgp public key file so the challenge of this is to determine which one is the file containing the password and we know that the password is going to be a plain text file so for example, we can just manually do this. So file 00, 00 is not. Let's move on to file 0, 0, 001. Nope. 0, 0, 003. Nope. So we can just keep doing this manually. And yeah, we should be able to identify the file which contains the password because this is the plain text file. And this is file number 7. But as you can see, because there are only 10 files for this challenge, what happens if there is a hundred files? So it's not going to be practical to do this manually. So one way we can do this is to use a one-liner for loop to look through the content of the directory and for every file in the directory, we read the file. Or we can run the file command to determine the file type. So let's go with the file command because it's more neat. So for example, we can use a for loop for i in the content of this directory do um, echo the file name out and done. Okay, so we don't want we don't want the dash al in this case because it is taking every individual line output and doing the echo on it. So let's just keep it as the ls common. Yep. So, so this is the syntax of a one-liner for loop for the condition do something. In this case, just a simply just simply echoing out, and then you end the for loop with the done. So in this case, we can do something like this. So for every content in this directory we can do the file command and we need to specify um, the dot slash because there is a dash at the front we need to um, give it the path so we can immediately see that for every entry in the in in this directory the output of ls basically do this file command on each of the entry so we can see that the first file 00, zero is a uh, is the PGP public key which we already know and then file 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are just binary data ok so what we want is file 7 it should be pretty obvious it's the text file which should contain the password for our next challenge so this is one way we can do it with a, with a simple one liner for loop so let's just read the file and then we should be able to get the password And this is how we can solve the challenge for Bandit 4. Thanks for watching and we will continue the challenges in the next video. Please help to like and subscribe if you have enjoyed the video as it would help the channel out a lot. Thanks!